Laudet, Laudet to Jesus Christus, praise be Jesus Christ. Greetings. It is Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. We're coming to you live from the Basilica of St. Peter's here in the Vatican. Pope Francis will soon celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, Holy Mass. My name is Father Paul Samasumo. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to welcome all of you joining us for this live broadcast. Viewers from around the world, Catholic Television, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks, Shalom TV India, EWTN Television, Salt and Light TV, Art Madashan TV, and listeners of Luminous Radio. Not forgetting the various diocesan and radio stations that are tuned in and of course listeners of shortwave radio welcome to all of you joining us through the various social media channels of vatican media welcome what you are seeing on your screens right now is a procession of cardinals bishops priests towards the altar in the Basilica of St. Peter. During today, during today's Divine Mercy celebration, there are 400 priests coming from all over the world. They are concelebrating in this mass. As you can see in the procession um, is His Grace Archbishop Rino Fisichella. He is the President of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of Evangelization and he is going to preside over the Eucharist here, the Divine Mercy Sunday. The Holy Father is already, is already seated right in front and he is going to participate and um, give us the homily during the Mass. Monsignor, eh, Cardinal, rather, <laughs> pardon me, Archbishop Reno Fisichella, President of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of Evangelization, presiding over the Divine Mercy Sunday Mass. I was just saying earlier on that uh, there are 400 priests coming from all over the world. They are celebrating in this Mass. These are the missionaries of mercy. If you recall, in the Holy Year of Mercy, the Extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy, we celebrate, that we celebrated from 8 December 2015 to 28 November 2016, Pope Francis commissioned some missionaries of mercy these are priests who are sent forth in the world to manifest mercy. The altar servers at this Mass are from the Congregation of the Theatins. Archbishop Fisichella insisting at the altar. By now it is well established that mercy is a key feature that defines the pontificate of Pope Francis. Even his papal motto is centered on the theme of mercy. God's mercy is a key word for Pope Francis's papacy. And he's always talking about mercy in his speeches, in his pastoral messages, in his homilies, even in his gestures. The story of Divine Mercy Sunday actually goes back into the 1930s when our Lord Jesus chose a humble Polish nun, Sister Maria Faustina Kolwaska, to receive private revelations concerning Divine Mercy. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. In questa domenica on this Sunday which concludes the octave of Easter the Lord teaches us to become true apostles of his mercy by touching his wounds 
the permanent sign of God's love for us. These are wounds that today are visible in the body and soul of many of our brothers and sisters who suffer and are and asked to be healed. With confidence in God's mercy, we acknowledge our sins. Archbishop Fizikela inviting us for a moment of silence. As you can see, the Holy Father participating in this Mass. Once again, Pope Francis having challenges with a painful knee, as he told an audience yesterday, making it difficult for him to stand for long periods. Onnipotente, abbia misericordia di noi. Perdoni i nostri peccati. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. The Gloria is going to be sung in Latin.
the glory. Let us pray. God of eternal everlasting mercy, who in a very recurrence of Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. In case you are just joining us, this is the Eucharistic celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. Archbishop Rino Fisichella, President of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of New Evangelization, is presiding. The Holy Father is present. Uh, he's having challenges with his knee, and he will give us the homily. The, the first reading. The faithful all used to meet by common consent in the portico of Solomon. No one else ever dared to join them, but the people were loud in their praise, and the numbers of men and women who came to believe in the Lord increased steadily. So many signs and wonders were worked among the people at the hands of the apostles that the sick were even taken out into the streets and laid on beds and sleeping mats in the hope that at least the shadow of Peter might fall across some of them as he went past. People even came crowding in from the towns around about Jerusalem, bringing with them their sick and those tormented by unclean spirits. And all of them were cured. The Word of the Lord. And now the responsorial psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Rendete grazie al Signore perché è buono, il suo amore per sé. Israele, il suo amore è per sempre. Dica la casa di Aronne, il suo amore è per sempre. Dicano quelli che temono il Signore, il suo amore è per sempre. Pietra scartata dai costruttori è divenuta la pietra d'angolo. Questo è stato fatto dal Signore, una meraviglia ai nostri occhi. Questo è il giorno che ha fatto il Signore. Rallegriamoci in esso ed esultiamo. Grazie 
Y preghiamo, Signore, dona la salvezza. Ti preghiamo, Signore, dona la vittoria. Benedetto colui che viene nel nome del Signore. Vi benediciamo dalla casa del Signore. Il Signore è Dio, Egli ci illumina. Rendete grazie al Signore per le buone, il suo amore è per sé. We just listened to the responsorial psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, His love is everlasting. And now we have the second reading being read in Spanish. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever. I join your brother who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos. Because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus, I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash round the chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The Word of the Lord. So what we have now is the sequence. The sequences are used in Easter time and on big occasions in the church. They are ancient poems that are often chanted in Gregorian melody. Christians to the Paschal victim offer you thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ who only is sinless reconciles sinners to the Father.
the gospel acclamation as the deacon solemnly takes the book of the gospel to the humble. First he has The gospel acclamation reminds us, You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believed. Archbishop Fisichella blessing the deacon before he proclaims the gospel. And there you have the book of the Gospels being solemnly taken to the Amber, where the Gospel will be proclaimed. The Gospel reading for this Divine Mercy Sunday is according to the book of John, chapter 20. After eight days, Jesus came and stood in their midst. Divine Mercy Sunday started really being celebrated universally in the church on 30th April 2000 with the canonization of St. Faustina Kolwaski, which took place on the second Sunday of Easter. Since then, it has been designated as Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us now listen to the Gospel. The Lord be with you. Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioanne. Gloria Divi Domine. Incensing the Gospel. La sera di quel giorno, il primo della settimana. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Tommaso, uno dei dodici, chiamato Didimo, non era con loro. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Otto giorni dopo i discepoli erano di nuovo in casa 
A week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were closed, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Bring your hand, and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but they are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So now the deacon takes the book of the gospel to the presider, Archbishop Fisichella, who kisses the book of the gospel and blesses us with the book of the gospels. In the meantime, we prepare to listen to a homily which will be given by the Holy Father, Pope Francis, on this second Sunday of Easter, Sunday of Divine Mercy. did mention at the beginning that for this pontificate, mercy is one of the hallmarks of Pope Francis. He's always talking about divine mercy and preaching about divine mercy even his papal motto has a theme of divine mercy, of mercy on it, and we recall that between 2015 and 2016, he declared an extraordinary year of mercy, the holy year of mercy. Today, the risen Lord appears to the disciples. To those who had abandoned him, he offered his mercy, he offers his mercy, and shows his wounds. The words he speaks to them are punctuated with a greeting that we hear three times in the gospel. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. These are the words of the reason, Jesus, as he encounters every human weakness and error. 
Let us reflect on the three times Jesus says those words. In them we will discover three aspects of God's mercy towards us. These words first give joy, then grant forgiveness, and finally offer comfort in every difficulty. First, God's mercy gives joy, a special joy. The joy of knowing that we have been freely forgiven. When on the evening of Easter, the disciples see Jesus and hear him say for the first time, Peace be with you, they rejoice. They were locked behind closed doors out of fear, but they were also closed in on themselves, burdened by a sense of failure. They were disciples who had abandoned their master at the moment of his arrest. They had run away. Peter even denied him three times, and one of their number, one from among them, had betrayed him. They had good reason to feel not only afraid but also useless. They failed. Fail. They, they had failed. In the past, certainly, they had made courageous choices. They had followed the master with enthusiasm, commitment, and generosity. Yet, in the end, everything had happened so fast. Fear prevailed, and they committed a great sin. They left Jesus alone at his most tragic hour. Before Easter, they had thought they were destined for greatness. They argued about who should be the greatest among them. Now, they have hit rock bottom. In this climate, they hear the reason Jesus say for the first time, Peace be with you. The disciples ought to have felt shame, yet they rejoice. Why? Because seeing his face and hearing his greeting turned their attention away from themselves towards Jesus. The disciples were overjoyed at seeing the Lord. They turned attention away from themselves towards Jesus. They were distracted from themselves and their failure and attracted by his gaze that brimmed not with severity but with mercy. Christ did not reproach them for what they had done but showed them his usual kindness and revived them, filled their hearts with peace that they had lost and makes them new persons, purified by forgiveness that is utterly unmerited. That is the joy of Jesus brings. It is the joy we too feel whenever we experience his forgiveness. We ourselves know what those disciples were feeling on that Easter evening because of our lapses, sins, and failures. At such times, we think nothing can be done. Yet, Precisely when the Lord does something, he gives us his peace through a good confession, through the words of someone who draws us near to us, through an interior consolation of spirit. The joy that gives is indeed born of forgiveness. It is a joy that comes from being pardoned and brings peace. It is a joy that raises us without humiliating. It is as if the Lord doesn't understand what is happening. Brothers and sisters, all of us have received have that experience of being pardoned. It will give us good, do us good to remember.
così Whenever metteremo la gioia. We experience that joy. Perché nulla può essere più come prima perché sperimenta la gioia di Dio. Once we have experienced the joy of God, Questa we can never be the same. That joy that changes us. Pace a voi. Peace be with you. The Lord says these words a second time and adds, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He gives the disciples the Holy Spirit and makes them agents of reconciliation. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Not only do the disciples receive mercy, they become dispensers of the mercy that they themselves received. They receive. They receive this power not on account of their merits, but as a pure gift of grace, based, however, on their experience of having been themselves forgiven. I turn to you, missionaries of mercy. If any of you does not feel pardoned, Don't be a missionary of mercy. First of all, you must feel forgiven. And from that mercy that you yourselves have received, you will be able to give mercy to others and pardon to others. Today and every day in the church, forgiveness must be received in this same way. Through the humble goodness of a merciful confessor, who sees himself not the holder of some power, but just a channel of mercy, who pours out upon others the forgiveness that he himself first received. And from here, this is where the ability to forgive everything comes from, because God forgives everything, always, It is always go, us who, for, who get tired of being forgiven. And you missionaries of peace, of, of mercy, must be the channels of forgiveness from your experience of having been forgiven. Do not torture the faithful when they come with sin. You want to understand what it's all about. Just give good advice. That's all. God forgives everything. Do not shut that portal, that, that door. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. These words stand at the origin of the sacrament of reconciliation, but not only. Jesus has made the entire church a community that dispenses mercy, a sign and instrument of reconciliation for humanity. Brothers and sisters, each of us in baptism received the gift of the Holy Spirit to be a man and woman of reconciliation. Whenever we experience the joy of being set free from the burden of our sins and failings, when we know at first hand what it means to be reborn out of a situation that appeared hopeless, we feel the need to share with those around us the bread of mercy. Let us feel called to this and let us ask ourselves at home, in my family, at work, in my community, do I foster fellowship? Am I a weaver of reconciliation? Do I commit myself to diffusing conflict? to bring in forgiveness in place of hatred and peace in place of resentment. Jesus, or oh, maybe I'm in a world of gossipers. Jesus wants us to be his witnesses before the word with his words. Peace be with you. I have received the peace I give to others. 
Peace be with you. The Lord says these words a third time. This is eight days after he appears to the disciples and strengthens the flagging faith of Thomas. Thomas wants to see and touch. The Lord is not offended or scandalized by Thomas's disbelief, but comes to his aid. Put your finger here and see in my hands. These are not words of defiance, but of mercy. Jesus understands Thomas's difficulty. He does not treat Thomas with hardness. The apostle is deeply moved by this kindness. From a disbeliever, he becomes a believer and makes the simplest and finest confession of faith. My Lord and my God. These are beautiful words. We can make themselves, we can make them our own and repeat them throughout the day, especially when, like Thomas, we experience doubts and difficulties. For the story of Thomas is in fact the story of every believer. There are times of difficulty when life seems to be to be life faith, moments of crisis when we need to touch and see. Like Thomas, it is precisely in those moments that we rediscover the heart of Christ, the Lord's mercy. In these situations, Jesus does not approach us in triumph with overwhelming proofs. He does not perform earth-shattering miracles, but instead offers us heartwarming signs of his mercy. He comforts us in the same way he did in today's gospel. He offers us his wounds. Do not forget this. In, in front of, of the worst sin that can ever be, just know there is always the Lord who shows us his wounds. Never forget that. And as confessors and priests, let us make the faithful see that in front of their sinfulness, there is the wounds. Uh, there are the wounds of Jesus, which are very powerful and merciful. Jesus makes us see the wounds of our brothers and sisters in the midst of our own crises and our difficulties. Divine mercy often makes us aware of the suffering of our neighbor. We think that we are experiencing unbearable pain and situations of suffering and we suddenly discover that others around us are silently enduring even worse things. There are others who are undergoing worse moments. If we care for the wounds of our neighbor and pour upon them the balm of mercy, we find being reborn within us a hope that comforts us in our weariness. Let us ask ourselves whether of late we have helped someone suffering in mind or body, whether we have brought peace to someone suffering physically or spiritually, whether we have spent some time simply listening, being present or bringing comfort to another person. For whenever we do these things, we encounter Jesus from the eyes of all those who are weighed down upon the trials of life. He looks at us with mercy and says once more to us, Peace be with you. I like to think of the presence of Our Lady Mary among the Apostles. After Pentecost, we have thought of her as Mother of the Church, and I like to think of her, especially of Monday when we pray and remember of Our Lady Mary, our Mother, as Mother of the Church, so that she will help us, especially as priests in our ministry. So the Holy Father just ending his homily there. You heard him um, several times in his homily make reference to the missionaries of mercy. 
These are the missionaries of mercy, priests around the world that he commissioned to manifest mercy around the world. And in the Basilica today, we have 400 priests that are celebrating at this Mass. We now take a moment in silence to reflect and ponder on what we have heard in a way to let the Word of God be grasped in our hearts. Many people in the Basilica can't resist uh, taking pictures of the Holy Father who is participating in this Eucharist that is being presided over by His Grace Archbishop Rino Fisichella, President of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of New Evangelization. The Holy Father just ending his homily moments ago and leaving us with a lot of challenges many challenges also to confessors, to priests, and to the missionaries of mercy. Very soon we expect to have the creed on this Divine Mercy Sunday, which is the second Sunday of Easter. We started celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday in the year 2000 with the canonization of St. Faustina, the Polish nun to whom the Lord revealed various images and things that he wanted done in the world. Among those things, I'm sure you've seen a famous image of Jesus that is always associated with divine mercy. Jesus appeared to St. Faustina with a vision in his right hand, blessing the world. It is an image with rays. The rays symbolizing the blood and water for our salvation and sanctification. And now, the choir leading us into the creed. I believe in one God.
Dear brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus, the risen one, invites us to touch in faith his glorious wounds, an indelible and eloquent sign of God's merciful love, which gives us the strength to raise the prayers raised by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So now we have prayers of the faithful sometimes also known as bidding prayers. The first prayer in French. May your mercy, Lord, make the church's motherhood tangible so that the wounds of every man and woman may receive relief and healing. We pray to the Lord Lord, hear our prayer. In a Chinese language. Your mercy, Lord, give to the ministers of reconciliation. Grant them the grace to contemplate the wounds of Christ that they may become joyful witnesses of your grace. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Portuguese. May your mercy, Lord, give the thoughts and choices of politicians and rulers towards the common good so that they may promote human dignity, the sharing of material goods, and the care for creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In Polish. May your mercy, Lord, reach the people of the earth torn apart by war so that the gift of peace which flows from the risen crucified one may reach the heart of every man and woman and may concord and justice be restored among nations. German. May your mercy, Lord, inspire concrete gestures of love on the part of each baptized person so that your tenderness and consolation may reach those who live in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Receive, merciful Father, the prayers that your confident church addresses to you. In the joy of the Easter of the risen Lord, for he lives and reigns forever and ever.
so it is off for right now on divine mercy sunday i was sharing with you earlier about how popular the devotion of divine mercy has become and it all started with saint faustina who saw in a vision for example several revelations from our lord jesus christ and one of those visions was about a painting of our lord jesus that you see in many places divine mercy in that uh, painting or rather in that image the vision that saint faustina saw was of red and white rays emanating from the heart of christ and the rays from the heart of christ symbolized the blood and water that was poured out for our salvation and our sanctification stones with Christ the living stone we offer sacrifice
Charles the Deacon incenses the congregation here in the Basilica. May this incense also remind us that we are God's holy people, His holy temple. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, on this day above all, to Lord yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he destroyed our death, and by rising he restored life. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim the Sanctus Holy, Holy, Holy. focus on the Eucharistic prayer, you might want to follow the liturgy using your daily or Sunday Missal. His Grace Archbishop Fisichella in this Mass is using the third Eucharistic prayer. Ti preghiamo umilmente, santifica, santifica e, consacra e consacra con il tuo spirito i doni che ti abbiamo presentato, presentato perché diventino il corpo e il sangue del tuo figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Egli, nella notte in cui veniva tradito, prese il pane ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione lo spezzò lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse prendete e mangiatene tutti 
questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi. Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese il calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse, prendete e bevetene tutti, questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Mistero della fede celebrando il memoriale della passione redentrice del Tuo Figlio, della Sua mirabile risurrezione e ascensione al cielo, nell'attesa della Sua venuta nella gloria, Ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della Tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione. E a noi, che ci nutriamo del corpo e sangue del Tuo Figlio, dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo, perché diventiamo, in Cristo, un solo corpo e un solo Spirito. Lo Spirito Santo faccia di noi un'offerta perenne a Te gradita perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso con i Tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe, suo Sposo, i Tuoi Santi Apostoli, i gloriosi Martiri e tutti i Santi nostri intercessori presso di Te. Ti preghiamo, o oh Padre, questo sacrificio della nostra riconciliazione doni pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua Chiesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e nostro Papa Francesco, l'ordine episcopale, i presbiteri, i diaconi e il popolo che tu hai redento. Sostieni nell'impegno cristiano i tuoi figli che oggi, mediante il lavacro della rigenerazione, e il dono dello Spirito Santo hai chiamato a far parte del tuo popolo, con il tuo aiuto possano camminare sempre in novità di vita. Ascolta la preghiera della questa famiglia, che ha convocato alla tua presenza nel giorno glorioso della risurrezione di Cristo Signore nel suo vero corpo. Ricongiungi a te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti e tutti coloro che, in pace con te, hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere per sempre della tua gloria. In Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale tuo Dio doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a te, Dio Padre Onnipotente, 
nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. greater man there after the Eucharistic prayer, and now the Archbishop inviting us to pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father. Liberaci, O Signore, da tutti i mali. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always free, be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion time, the choir leading with the communion antiphon, 
Christ is our Passover, the Lamb sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. In case you joined us when the Eucharist had already started, this is the live broadcast of the Divine Sunday Mass in the Basilica of St. Peter here in the Vatican. His Grace Reno Fisichella, Archbishop Reno Fisichella, President of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of New Evangelization, he is presiding. The Holy Father gave a very touching and moving homily on forgiveness and mercy.
Pope Francis has always envisaged the church as a field hospital that particularly reaches out to the least, the lost, and those that he says are the last. He has often said that the church is called to come out of herself and to go to the peripheries, not only geographically, but also to existential peripheries, to confront the mystery of sin, as we heard in his homily today, to confront the mystery of pain, of injustice, of ignorance, of indifference, in fact, all forms of mystery, of misery, rather. And we recall the extraordinary jubilee of mercy that Pope Francis declared from the 8th of December 2015 to 20 November 2016. In that year, Pope Francis said, The name of God is mercy. Mercy is the identity card of God, he said. Today, divine mercy is a very popular devotion all over the world. And rightly so. Preghiamo. Let us pray. Dio Onnipotente, la forza del sacramento pasquale che abbiamo ricevuto sia sempre operante nei nostri cuori. Per Cristo nostro Signore. Christ, grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal sacrament may have a continuing effect in our midst and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Inchinatevi per la benedizione. Bow your heads for the blessing. Dio, che nella risurrezione God, who in the resurrection of his only Son has given us the grace of redemption and made us his children, give you the joy of his blessing. The Redeemer, who has given us endless freedom, make you sharers in the eternal inheritance. And you who through faith in Christ have been resurrected in baptism, may you grow in holiness of life to meet him one day in the home of heaven. And now the blessing. Benedizione di Dio Onnipotente. Padre, Figlio e Spirito Santo, discenda su di voi e con voi rimanga per sempre. Amen. So we just received a concluding blessing there from Archbishop Rino Fisichella, who presided over this Mass today. And there the deacon dismissing us. The mass has ended. Go forth. Alleluia. Alleluia. And there you have it, the Mass of the Divine Mercy Sunday, presided over by Archbishop Rino Fisichella. Now, the choir singing the Marian Antiphon, Regina Celli. Remember though that in about 30 minutes time, shortly you can join Pope Francis with the Regina Celi recitation from his study in the Apostolic Palace.
and we'll be coming to you live with that recitation of the Regina Celli. Constant reference during this Mass to missionaries of mercy who were commissioned by Pope Francis during the extraordinary jubilee of mercy because the Holy Father wanted them to be a sign of the Father's welcome to all those in search of forgiveness. And he wanted preachers who would go out to the world with inspiring messages of mercy, heralds of joy and forgiveness. And with those images of those who participated at the altar now living, we have come to the end of our Divine Mercy Sunday Mass here in St. Peter's Basilica. On behalf of Vatican Media and for the Post Samasumo, allow me to acknowledge the viewers of Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks, Shalom TV India, EWTN Television, Salt and Light TV, Art Madashan TV, and listeners of Luminous Radio. Various radio stations around the world are tuned in, and some of you have been following this Eucharist through shortwave radio. As I said, if you can, Remember to join us shortly for the Regina Celli with Pope Francis. We will be coming to you live from St. Peter's Square. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praise be Jesus Christ. Love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't want 